sister Manna. She is 12 years old. A few days ago she was playing with her friends when she felt some discomfort and spotted her clothes. She felt scared as she didn't know what had happened. Her mother told her to use cloth. But her teacher helped her to reach out to an Asha worker who in turn got in touch with her mother and explained the importance of sanitary napkins. But then the problem was, she did not have the required information. The Manna is now 15 and has passed class 10. To continue with her education, she will have to go to a senior secondary school, which is far away. In fact, on her way, she is often stared at by boys. Moreover, her parents want to marry her off soon. What can she do now? Where can she find support? Is there a peer educator in the neighborhood? But how does she find one? Now let's suppose the Manna did continue her schooling. She will finish it by the time she is 18. Now she stands at the threshold of adulthood. She may get married and her family expects her to-be husband to take care of her. She would like to take up a job and earn money but doesn't know how. She would like to have her own bank account but doesn't know where to go to. Manna did not get any answers from her parents or her peers. She needs information and skills. What then is the answer? This was one life, one voice in a country that has over 250 million adolescents and over 350 million young people. Can you imagine the potential of this generation? Can you imagine the size of opportunity? 30% of India's population consists of young people presenting a historic opportunity of demographic dividend. But along with the opportunity, there are challenges that must be overcome. 23% girls are married before the legal age of 18. On an average, 9 million girls in the age group 15 to 19 years either have delivered a child or are expecting a child. Only 10% of young people have workforce skills and vocational training. School dropout rates are high. Can India realize the potential of this emerging generation? The United Nations Population Fund and the Tata Institute of Social Sciences have risen to the challenge by offering the first of its kind on-ground and online solution. So what's on ground? The Center of Excellence on Youth and Adolescence, an intellectual destination located in the National Capital Territory of Delhi. It has three pillars, research and development, a youth portal, and a virtual marketplace. The center will focus on research and policy advocacy for advancing young people's agenda. The center will establish a critical research and knowledge hub on adolescence and youth. Here, inspired scholars will come together to seek solutions for stronger, strategic and youth-centric policies and interventions. Supporting on ground is an initiative which is online. Welcome to youthinfoindia.org, India's first ever portal that provides adolescent and youth-specific data from national surveys. Anyone, from a policymaker to a student, can access this information. Another online initiative, the Virtual Marketplace, is a window for young people to access data and information, programs and schemes, and products and services. Here, the voices of Young India will also help you define emerging needs to plan your future foray and realize the demographic bonus. There is a great opportunity in India to make this happen. India has one of the largest and fastest growing populations of Internet users in the world. There were 555 million mobile users at the end of the year 2013, out of which 23.8 million access Internet from their mobile phones at least once a day. 
smartphone use is increasing by 52% every year in urban areas and by 20% per year in rural areas. 143.2 million people use web from computers. 35% of internet users in India are in the age group of 15 to 24 years. Going by current trends, growth in the internet base in India is now exponential. It is time to move from recognizing the demographic dividend to actually leveraging the demographic bonus. Let us go back to Tamanna at her various stages of problems to see how can the virtual marketplace answer her questions. When she was 12, the marketplace could have been a one-stop access point for many. It could have helped train and guide her teacher and the ASHA worker on interpersonal communication and available services that could have made a difference in the lives of Tamanna and her family. Suppliers of sanitary napkins could have used this platform to map potential markets. When she was 15, the Anganwadi worker could have used this platform to reach out to adolescent peer educators and they in turn could have provided Tamanna valuable support to convince her parents to let her study and not get married at this age. At 18, through this platform, she could have accessed schemes and opportunities provided by government bodies, NGOs, private sector to make her financially strong and independent. This is how it has been envisioned, a seamless digital shopping mall where partners like you can place information, products, services and more to be accessed by young people. While this is just a glimpse of the infinite possibilities of creating such a virtual marketplace, it needs your participation to be a reality. Linkages will be provided to different government schemes for young people. Private sector can find opportunities for CSR. NGOs can exchange best practices. Service providers can find innovative curricula. Young people can find opportunities for schooling, skills development and so much more. They can find information they require to fulfill their own potential. Young India needs our investment. 